Hey guys, Frank here with another episode of Modern Church Leader. Great to be with you today. Um, excited for my guest. We get to talk a little bit about kind of the business side of church. Uh, I don't get to interview many executive mm-hmm. pastors, so today I'm joined by Dr. Chuck Morris. How's good, it going? Frank. On? Really good to be here, and I appreciate the invite and uh, just yeah. get to talk about uh, church life in some capacity. So it's good. One hundred percent. Yes, and and it's cool. We have a little bit of a you know a little family mm-hmm. connection mm-hmm. going on. Caroline, who's yeah. on the marketing team, has been here for a long time. I mean, probably over yeah. five yeah. years. Uh, and uh, and your son got married just yeah, he, a little while. He, uh, ago, he chose so. wisely. Uh, they, yeah, they he they were they were a COVID wedding in in uh, twenty twenty, and uh, and yeah, she's just been yeah. a blessing to our family. We we love her to death. So. Yeah. yeah, Caroline's great. And I've met Tim and we've hung out a little bit. I know he's done some even some mm-hmm. video yeah. work on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's kind of a video great. producer by trade at a church and uh, doing things like that on the side. Um, even even with the ministry yeah, event yeah. Is, is great. It's great to see your kids doing that sort of thing and serving the Lord. So. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah, we can uh, we can all <laughs> hope and yeah. pray and dream yeah. from those days. Like I was telling you earlier, I've got the little yep. guys. So, you know, I'm a few years, yep. a few years away from all that. But looking forward to it. So you're the, you're currently the executive pastor, but why don't you, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, like your journey sure. into ministry? And I know you were in San Diego where I'm at and now you are out yeah. in Tennessee and yeah, yeah just give sure. us a I'm a native San Diegan. I uh, spent the first 38 years of my life there. So, um, you know, I can tell you I'm a diehard Padres fan and, uh, I mean, it's, it's Come postseason season time. So, um, I'm gonna. We can, I'm gonna we can talk about yeah, abs- you know, all the drama. If you uh, I will also tell you that I was just born and raised a Chargers fan, uh, but uh, no offense, yeah. they're dead to me now. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't need anything that's part of Los <laughs> Angeles. You know, you you left me at the altar, so to speak. So uh, yeah, I did get to go to a uh, Chargers game uh-huh. in L.A. Um, which, you know, it would have been sure. great if it was here, but the new yeah, stadium is yeah. pretty cool. Um, I, you know, kind of root for the Titans now. Uh, my son-in-law works for them, and yeah. they're they're in Tennessee. That's where I'm at. So that's kind of a natural connection. But, yeah, um, grew, up, grew up in San Diego and really loved it. Um, and uh, the, the brief story is really kind of felt a call to ministry in my college years. And um, through nobody's fault um, other than my own, just was not as obedient in pursuing, you know, what I really knew God wanted me to do. So chase some different avenues in my life. Even in spite of that, you know, met a met a wonderful wife, um, had two great kids, but never really could shake that call that uh, of ministry. God wanted me doing something else, and so I finally came to a a, a point of surrender. Went went down on the aisle uh, one Sunday night, you know, grabbed my wife by the hand, and she walked down with me. And of course, I didn't surprise her. We'd been having those conversations. Uh, hey, honey, let's go to the ministry. Honey, we're going into the so, ministry. Um, so I knew even even that that night, I knew that 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 meant something in my life. I, I even then thought I, I may not be living in San Diego for the rest of my life. I knew I'd probably have to go to school, further some education, uh, and just be willing to do whatever uh, God wanted me. So that brought me to. Um, Ultimately, to uh, to Tennessee, to the Knoxville area where I'm at, and this church I've been at, yeah. Chilhowee Hills Baptist Church, been here for 22 years, and um, kind of had done some student ministry and, and education ministry in San Diego, and so I kind of took on those hats over time here, and that's you know everything from being the student pastor to running and building you know kind of a groups or Sunday school kind of thing. We call it Bible Fellowship, but um, in charge of all that, and then a, a couple of years ago, our, our pastor at the time had. Uh, uh, engaged some conversations, you know, with me about what it might look like to have an executive pastor at our church, and that I might be a good fit for the role. So, you know, I, I fought that for about eight months, and and then you know, finally, really, just became convinced that that's that that was kind of the next progression in my ministry journey. And right. uh, so, it's you know, I'm doing completely different work than I than I did 20 years ago. Um, but uh, I'm speaking with the students tonight. So, um, yeah, I still dabble in that, you know, kind of stay young, so to speak, uh, every, every once in a while. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. So, so the job Absolutely. now is kind of that mix of, um, still doing pastoral uh, ministry, still, still have the opportunities to preach, you know, minister to people still overseeing that, that, that Sunday school Bible fellowship model, but on the other hand, responsible for, um, you know, the finances, the budgets, um, you know, staffing personnel, um, you know, those sorts of things. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of hats to have right now, but what, what makes mm-hmm. in your current, you know, you've been at mm-hmm. it for a few years, you came from kind of the pastoral mm-hmm. side and now you're on, I don't know, for lack of a better term, the yeah, business yeah. side still ministry, but, uh, what makes a great executive? Well, pastor? I think that's a, if I had that answer in a nutshell, I'd be writing a book and, uh, <laughs> 
uh, but well, I'm but, helping. You know, I'm helping yeah, you. Yeah, you know, good. Tease Let's it just out. talk out my, my outline here. Um, I'm I'm a big fan. I mentioned earlier. I'm a big fan of kind of just the overall concept of balance, and and I, I just think that's critical in just about every area of life. We can go, you know, our pendulums can just swing wildly. So in my position, um, from my perspective as an executive pastor, I'm not just a businessman. I I was involved in a, in a family business that my dad owned and we kind of partnered in that. So I had some experience on, you know, what is a, what is a PNL statement or what does a budget look like? I had, had some uh, hands-on experience with that, but have spent most of, most of my educational um, experience and work experience was on the, on the pastoral and ministry side. So for me, an executive yeah. pastor is not just a businessman because I think you can be a businessman and really get into business mode where, for example, all you're thinking is the bottom line with money. But you you can sometimes overlook that aspect of it's going to take a little faith for us to make this financial commitment. Um, by the same token, you can be super spiritual about everything and be really unwise when it comes to expenditures and so forth. So, so I think a, an executive pastor is that guy that really has kind of merged those concepts of of understanding the business of the church, but but knowing that you're doing it as a ministry and for me personally as a minister of the gospel. I can't I can't right. um, separate those two. So. Right. Right. Yeah. No, I love that. Well, I know we kind of talked about like talking about like the yeah, hiring yeah. side of this and I don't know, maybe we'll talk firing too, but it might be another episode. Uh, hiring's really- <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's another. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Um, but hiring is important. Right. And, and, uh, I think helping pastors, you know, most churches don't have an executive right. pastor. So right. most churches, uh, the senior pastor, is probably in the mix right. on hiring and plays a role yeah. and maybe is the decision maker, right? Or at least plays a big part sure. in that hiring process, thinking about hiring, all the things. So, I mean, let, yeah, let's, let's talk okay. hiring yeah. a little bit. I mean, how do you, how do you think about hiring staff at your um, church? Well, it's, it's a big picture, big discussion, obviously. And, and I think we approach hiring a couple of different ways. I think what we, uh, you know, kind of what I was asked to focus on a little bit today was pastoral hiring. So, you know, they can make yeah. that distinction between hiring a maintenance person or even a, an office admin person. Some of those are, are obviously treated differently. Uh, there's more responsibility right. to, to go along with that pastoral role. So, so focusing on the, on the pastoral role, um, it's, um, you know, for, for us, the process starts with really um, defining that job very clearly if it hasn't been defined. And, and that may sound sort of strange, but as churches grow, uh, positions will naturally be needed. Um, you know, For example, you might have one person at your church who's doing middle school, uh, high school, college, and maybe recreation ministry, you know, and you're just wearing a lot of hats. So you, you might have to, if you're going to divide that up, you have to define what does that look like? Are we looking for a middle school person? Are we looking for a rec person? So just getting a clear definition of what that position is and really being able to define it. I think that that's where... Right. Um, I, I, I'm not a big fan of jumping the gun. And a lot of times people will just kind of post a position and then they really don't know what that's going to look like. I think that just leads to confusion. So having your house in order, I think is a huge, uh, a huge first step. Um, so, uh, for us, that that's really where we, we, uh, we start and we involve more than just a, a lead pastor. Um, uh, I would work in very close conjunction with a lead pastor, although I would kind of be taking the lead in that initiative. In our church structure, we've right. got a personnel uh, committee, a group of you know lay members of the church that would be involved in those personnel decisions. We, you know, we do have a, a group of deacons. They're not so much involved in that business aspect, but we will uh, call the our deacon leaders together for spiritual insight and wisdom, so they just know what's going on. So you know, we try to get a lot of input, so it doesn't just come from one person. So um, I I guess you could say I, I have the power to make some of those decisions, but I would never just want to do that by myself. Um, it, I think it's just there's wisdom um, in, a, in, a, in a large group of wisdom and counsel and, and yeah. godly perspective. So that's kind of where we, we start that from. And um, I mean, if you want to get into the nuts and bolts of it beyond that, um, you know, we we would. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I, let, let's yeah. pause real quick on the job okay, description sure. side of things, right? Because I look even in the business world myself, mm -hmm. right? Like writing the job description, really thinking about the position, knowing the responsibilities. I, I've not been a part of a lot of that in the church setting. I've been a part of mm -hmm. some of that. And in my experience, which is very limited, qualified sure. with that, um, I, I've seen churches kind of make these job responsibilities that are like massive. <laughs> it's like you're almost yeah. doing everything yeah. like versus versus trying to be very 
specific about what this role is and like what success yeah. looks like. So what, I, what have you learned around writing well, great job descriptions and honing yeah, in? On I, I'm, again, I, I think um, kind of big picture bullet points where you leave room for discussion in the interview process is really helpful. Um, they all be honest with you. I've, I've had, I've had some churches contact me and, you know, so kind of on that other side of that coin. And, um, I, I got a job description one time that when I just read it, it was overwhelming. My first response was I'll yeah. literally be running the church single-handedly. What is anybody else doing? And, and, and so right, in, right. In my thinking, even if I was if I kind of interested in that position, if that job description is overwhelming, I might back away when really I'm a good fit for it. So, yeah, I think you right. and some people maybe try to answer all the questions ahead of time. And so literally they're breaking that thing, thing down into such minute detail. So we try to keep it, you know, kind of larger focused, um, you know, broader, broader statements, you know, make it very clear. Here are the mm-hmm. areas you oversee. Here are the people you report to. You know, here's your organizational structure, um, that sort of thing. And I'll also tell you this. Um, I had uh, one church that was talking to me and um And I asked for the job description and they said, I can give you the job description of a guy that kind of filled that position before, but this one's going to morph and change. And I, when I pressed on that a little bit, what it became was when we hire you, you get the chance then to put some input in onto the job description. Now I, I can see some value to that, but I also see some confusion. And that was one thing that gave me pause because I don't want to uh, leave one position, go to another, only to find out as we work together to craft this job description, it doesn't really end up fitting uh, maybe my expectations. And so, um, you know, there's right. a lot of different ways to do it, but I'm more of a fan of, of kind of just being real clear. This is what would the expectation would be. And um, yeah, and then, and then kind of filling in those blanks with discussion. I think you get more in, in discussion than right. you do just this massive list on a job description. So. Yeah. Yeah. How do you, how do you do the interview process? Yeah, sure well, for, yeah, for, for a pastoral thing, of course, once we post that job, um, and we, we, we post a job um, various ways. Um, I know that's a little bit ahead of the interview question, but, you know, we've got a local association of Southern Baptists, so we will post it locally for, for people in the Knoxville area. We post it to our state uh, convention, Tennessee Baptist Mission Board, Southern Baptist Committee, SBC.net, you know, there's a national thing. And then we'll usually get one uh, internet source, um, and so we'll post that job there. And, and so when we get to get those resumes in, if it's a senior pastor position, we'll start with a, a search committee. If it's a kind of a secondary ministry position, we'll do that in-house. Our search committee is made up of right. members of our church that we nominate and vote on and so forth. And so um, once, once we get all of the respondents gathered and they kind of go through those, then we could kind of get to what you're talking about. How do we, how do we start interviewing them? And so um, if we would get that group down to, let's just say 10, um, that would be a, a process um, with the, the committee doing the initial contacting. Then they bring the this ministerial staff level people into that discussion. Um, we work together. We look for red flags. You know, where did that guy to go to school? What church was he at? You know, is there anything we need to be, be looking for? Um, all that happens before we actually kind of do an interview. Now, I will say communication goes through with those guys. They know what's going on every step of the way. You know, hey, we've given the church an update. Here's where you stand. Uh, you're being considered. You're not. So, so when we get to the interview. Yeah. yeah. This, this week we're checking exactly, your social media exactly. accounts. Uh, and we do. And we do. <laughs> um, so then when, when we get to the kind of the, the real crux of the interview, um, depending on distance, it, it may be Zoom. Um, obviously, that's a whole new, you know, brand new world for most people. Most people are comfortable with it. But, you know, we're in Tennessee. If a guy's coming from Montana, then, you know, we're probably not going to bring him out just for that initial interview. But um, we'll do a, a committee or, you know, a team kind of thing um, as that initial um communication. If we feel like we're going further in that process, then that's when we'll bring them in for more of an in-person thing. But in all honesty, we're probably not going to move forward even with that in-person thing, unless we really get a sense that that's the direction that God is is bringing us in. And uh, we've got a checklist that yeah. we follow that we measure all of those uh, steps along the way. So we will put the date the job was posted. Uh, we put uh, dates things are supposed to be done and when they did get done. And so we track those things uh, along the way. So when we get down to that kind of that more of a formal interview process. We've, we've had a lot of those check marks leading us up to that point. So, um, you know, we try to keep it. We don't, I wouldn't imagine, you know, we're looking for a senior pastor. I wouldn't imagine interviewing five guys. I mean, I, I think we, you know, we're looking more for a sense of God's direction before we get more to that formal um, interview process. 
So you won't you won't even get on a Zoom call type of interview with that first ten. But sticking with ten as the sure. example, like you got all the resumes, yep. you kind of did a bunch of pre work, you narrowed it down to ten. You wouldn't interview those ten. You would go right. from that's, the ten. That's, that's where I would something smaller yeah, for before me you as executive even, pastor in our construct. And I'm talking about like a senior pastor. Um, yeah, I, w- I wouldn't yeah. get involved now. There's regular communication. I meet regularly with the uh, the head of you know the pastor search committee. I'll get weekly updates um, and any questions they have. And is that team doing interviews with the ten? Are are they doing actual um, interviews? That would probably. Um, and, I think all of these are different de- de- depending on situations. But generally speaking, um, yeah. there would probably be a, a, a Zoom type of meeting that would involve me, maybe some yep. key ministry staff. And those uh, members of that search committee, those people that are, have already been looking at all those resumes, kind of wading through that uh, that that information, um, you know. And, and honestly, yeah. when you post things like that for the world to see, you get a lot of people who are applying for a job that you know just don't maybe have those qualifications you're looking for. And so they they yeah. weed through a lot of yeah. that stuff, and and so then, um, which is a great uh, help to us as uh, staff members. Um, but there is regular communication, um, you know, between. Uh, myself, for example, and, and whoever's on that search committee. Um, so, right. But yeah. when you get, I guess yeah. I'm trying to get to the point. You got yet yeah, ten. ten. When do you yeah. start? Like, how do you get yeah. to interviewing? I, you, what, yeah, I think with those ten. Yeah, before I think with those ten, like, that would then be you know kind of that we would probably zoom uh, with all ten, unless it's a local person. Yeah. And you know, minister, right. ministerial speaking, especially if it's a guy that's kind of near our area, they don't really want to know. Um, you, they don't want other people to know they're even looking. And so, you know, you might be at the yeah, church down right, the street, right. but you'd still rather Zoom because that's a lot more you know, private than, you know, driving down to that church or walking yeah, to the office. Right. So, again, situations yeah. are, all, are all different. But, yeah, we'd probably do that that Zoom contact with, again, myself, maybe a search committee and key staff looking at yeah. those first 10. And then, um, yeah, we'd probably, we'd probably really be looking for maybe our top two. And I would say no more than three candidates because you might find some guys that are really you know pretty equal in their in their abilities and and but that's that's really from that really a pragmatic standpoint you know education experience you know maybe age what are what are these factors that you you know have they had ministerial success those are the nuts and bolts right so when we really get to that zoom interview and beyond we're looking probably more at um more of those spiritual uh, types of questions uh that are that are going to be coming up so yeah. Right. All right. What, um, when you get yeah. into that spot, like, what have you learned? Cause you know, you, you kind of have what's mm-hmm. on paper. So great. You can like, okay, they went to a good school. They've, they've been on staff at these yeah. three other churches. We like those churches, blah, blah, blah. blah. Like you can kind of go, okay, this kind of fits what we're looking yeah. for on paper, but now I got to go, you know, I really need to see if this person is going to be a good fit yeah. at our church. Like, so, you, you know, and you're kind of, like interviewing oh, is hard, right? Like terrible. Doing good, doing good interviews and asking the right mm-hmm. questions and really like searching for like culture mm-hmm. fit and just all yeah. the things that come along. So what have you learned about just holding good interviews that really kind of give you what you need yeah. to make a decision? Uh, I think in, in, in our experience or my experience uh, specifically, it's interesting that you mentioned culture fit because that's kind of a, a buzz right now. You know, what is the culture of our church? What's the culture of our staff? That's a that's a right. an intangible that you and I both know is real. Yep. But how do I write that down on paper so that you can see it? Um, and I think that's one benefit yep. of online worship. Now we've done that for years, but most churches, when COVID started, they were at least on Facebook. So you you can observe yeah. not just numbers or baptisms or whatever. You can actually kind of feel like you're in at least that worship experience. And so that's kind of helped to see right. what it's like. But you know, getting beyond that, it's it's really hard to um, kind of define your culture. And if you can't define it yourself, yeah. how am I going to express that to a candidate? So that being said, what I'm looking for is more, maybe some more broad concepts. For example, one of the things that I really try to pick up, because you know we're going to ask everybody the same questions, right? I mean, we're, we're, we're going to yeah. ask, you know, yeah. the, the basics. Uh, but, but I'm looking for a couple of things. One of the things I'm looking for in an interview is humility. And remember, I, I go back to my mm-hmm. thing on balance. Um, I, I, I think yeah. humility is one of the, one of the most lacking uh, aspects of pastoral characteristic these days. Um, and it's hard, but, but now remember what we're talking about, an interview, a hiring process. So I'm supposed to show up at this interview. And I'm supposed to brag on myself and tell you all about my credentials. Right. At the same time, really not coming off as boastful and arrogant. 
that's a tough thing to do. So I, right. I understand it because yeah, I've been totally in that is. position. So that's a, that's a benefit. Now I'm on a more of a hiring side. I can, I can understand what that person's going through. So I try, I look for those sorts of things. You know, you've got your credentials on paper. We, we know that or you wouldn't be here, but I, I want to know, right. uh, for example, can you communicate some of those things to me um, without making it look like you're breaking your arm, patting yourself on the back? And I, again, how do I define that other than just we sit down and talk face to face? Am I getting the sense that you're yeah. genuine? Am I getting the sense that you kind of deflect glory and credit away from yourself and, and just talk about how God has honored you and blessed you in ministry and, and maybe even used you in spite of yourself? But at the same time, say, these are my mm -hmm. spiritual gifts or this is the experience. These are the things that I've learned. So I'm going to apply that to this situation. It's a tightrope. And, and so I, I try to look for humility mm -hmm. as, as uh, much as I much as I can. And I also try to, to see if I can um, detect some sort of a, a sense of spiritual discernment. Um, you know, and that maybe comes with some questions like, why do you want this job? Um, you know, because hiring in a church is yeah. it's, it's hiring, but it's different than hiring in the secular market. You know, you if I'm if I'm mm -hmm. the owner of an accountant firm, you might just want this job because we pay more. Or you might want this job because your right. you know your mother lives near here or whatever the reasons are. But in church life, you also have to yep. factor into this thing. You know, has God called you here? Is this is this part of this next step on your journey? And so, um, I, I and I, and I don't think it's wrong to move from. Let's choose Montana. I don't know if you have any viewers in Montana, but I said that earlier. So I don't think it's wrong to move from Montana to Knoxville necessary to be closer to family. But that can't be the only reason. Um, I, I have to hear right. something right. about. There's some, you know, something is communicated to me about the, the, the call, the, the desire, the, the sense to do that is just something I can't explain. I, you know, I, I need to sort of pick up on some sort of spiritual discernment and not just nuts and bolts and, oh, yeah, I want to move to Tennessee because, um, you know, it's more of a conservative state. I can carry a gun and it's cheaper to live. That, that, I, I know right, that, right. but I, does, does that make sense? I, I need some you know, humility and spiritual right, yeah. discernment no, absolutely. Uh, that go over and above kind of those typical questions you would ask right. in an interview. So. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think it's maybe a little bit like it's not, it's not no, a regular no. job. It's not just right. a job. Right. That's and yet how it is. You think hence, about. The, hence the executive pastor. Right. You, you yeah. get paid, you get benefits, there's taxes taken out, you know, we, you know, cost of living yep. adjustments. There, there is the business aspect of it, but there's yep. a spiritual element uh, as well. So, right. right. Yeah. Yep. Totally. Are there any questions that you've honed in on where you're like, okay, I got these three questions that are my, you know, superpower questions. Oh, boy. Superpower questions. Me. I don't know that I have any superpower questions, but I do have some <laughs> things that are going to be part of every conversation. Um, and I, and as trite as it may sound, I'm, I'm almost always going to ask somebody to recount for me their personal testimony. And, I, and I, that's yeah. one thing that I learned from experience in the past. I, I've been interviewed before and I've actually been offered a position, which I consequently did not take. And one of the reasons that I had a check about that is the guys that I was talking to never once asked me, never even asked me if I was saved, much less how, you know, I had right. some experience and they kind of knew me from being here. And it's almost like that was enough. And, and so right. I, that, and you may say, well, would you dare to ask a, a, a senior pastor with 25 years experience to tell you his testimony? Yes, I would. Cause that's the foundation for everything moving yeah. forward. I need to know that you've had that transformative experience that, 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 that relationship with Jesus Christ. So uh, that, I don't mean that to be like a Sunday school answer. Uh, that would just be something that would just kind of be um, on the, on the, on the menu. And it's also good just to, that's also part of um, building sure, a relationship, absolutely. right? And, and yeah. you know, like there's an element of just, you know, you're trying to get to know right. these people right. in a short period of time. And that relational yeah. connection in church yeah. is, I mean, it's yeah. just a massive yeah. thing, you know? So yeah. knowing their story. And I think, and, and, and I think being, being able to communicate that is, is um, that's a valid um, challenge to every believer. I mean, to fulfill the Great Commission. Yeah. Can you communicate your story? If you're going to be a, a ministerial level a capacity at this church, don't you think you need to be able to communicate that story? And, uh, and so, you know, right. articulate yeah. what God has done in your life. And then not only just that salvation experience, but that journey, you know, you know, I can ask a guy, you know, give me three minutes about some highs and lows. What, 
what has God uh, really taught you through a valley? Uh, how has God uh, done something miraculous in your life that you couldn't have done on your own? You know, those right. kinds of questions that really right. let a guy just flesh out that journey or that experience. So that's right. an important part of the, uh, the interview. Um, and to take that a little bit further, I'd kind of um, ask them to explain that, that call to ministry because call to salvation is one thing. I mean, everybody at our church that's saved can should be able to articulate that. But those of us that are called to ministry, um, that that anointing that you know set apart for ministry, that thing that we would gather over those people and ordain them and say, yes, we believe that God has set you apart for this ministry, that needs to be articulated, um, in my opinion, as well. Um, why, why, mm -hmm. why are you in ministry? I talked to a guy years and years ago that really thought he wanted to be a youth pastor because he, in youth group, he had so much fun at camp. He had so much fun, you know, fun talking to girls, thought, thought it was a job he did have to do a lot of work on, you know, that whole thing. And, you know, it, it doesn't take yeah. long in a conversation to determine that your, your call is for fun and no work and so forth. And so that, that's a bit of an extreme right. example, but, yeah. um, but, I, but, but right. I want to yeah, know yeah, why, yeah. why God has brought you to this place and, and, um, how does that fit in, in that ministry pattern in your life? And I, I use an example of maybe like going back to the story of a pastor, um, for example, in the, in the business world, let's say use accounting again, I might jump to another firm because they pay me $10,000 a year more, or there's more room for advancement, you know, all those secular reasons that we might move. Yep. Pastors a lot of times do things seemingly backwards. So you might have a pastor who has taken a church in 10 years. I'm making a bunch of stuff up here, so I'm not referring to anybody in particular, taking a church in 10 yeah. years from 200 to 3000. And that pastor is now, you know, looking at your church and your church is running two or three hundred. In the, in the secular mind, we would say, that's a backward step. Why are you doing that? But the fact right. of the matter is that pastor may know that God has specifically kind of gifted him to have that ability to grow a church from 200 to 3,000, but maintaining 3,000 plus or growing it to 5,000, it's just, that's just not in his skill set. So he, he, yeah, he, right. he could articulate that to me if I'm saying, why would you go to a church from 3,000 down to 300? If he can just tell me, because that's what God has given me to do. And I've, I've done that here. And, and it's time for me to do that somewhere else. That's, that's just one example right, of right. how, Hiring at a ministry level is different than hiring at a secular level. Sometimes it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. And I want to be able to have a guy tell me um, why that doesn't make sense and how that fits in his journey. So, yeah. 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 No, I love that. Let, let me ask you kind of uh, like yeah, we'll probably sure. talk all day, but a couple mm -hmm. questions, just nuts and bolts. How much is salary and benefits and other I'll just call yeah. them fringe benefits yeah. for lack of a better term. How much does that stuff come um, into play? Well, in it, your it does. And again, that's that, that's that thing that a lot of times in churches are guilty of this so many times, um, you know, well, if God's called you here, then you ought to be able to work for $4 an hour. And that's, that's just a, that's an right. insult. I, I don't think that's, that's not even biblical. You know, the scriptures call for the, you know, the priest to get a double portion. And, you know, I think we need to take care of those people that, uh, that are doing that important job of ministry. So, um, but yeah, it, I, I, I know in a hiring process, um, I know that that's going to be a factor. I try never to put that into the conversation until we're much further down the road. Um, and so, so right. that's not a, a temptation or discouragement either way. We try to get down to those things. Again, what we're talking about, has God called you to this church or this area? What is your journey like? Um, and if we can get, mm -hmm. if we can get past some of that and really feel comfortable, then we can have those conversations. Um, now, again, that's one of my jobs as executive pastor recently over the last couple of years. We never had a handbook, an employee handbook. And I used to use that as kind of a, mm -hmm. a badge of honor. Ah, we don't need that stuff. We're, we, we trust and we're family and all that. Well, we learned over time that there was room for abuses in there. So we created a structure which right. really is not um, legalism. It's actually freedom. And so we've we've created right. some benefits that our, our staff never had before. We've created a vacation structure where if you've been here a certain amount of time, you you know, kind of like the, the real outside secular world. Uh, we've created you you get a short term right. disability, long term disability, things that we pay for you now that we didn't have five years ago. And those I think it's important to be good to your people, um, to retain them. Um, so, but those are nice nuggets to yeah. be able to say to a, to a person because that's, that's just reality. Um, you know, ch most churches, yeah. most, um, are not going to pay their pastor, you know, 300,000 a year, but we're going to, we're going to pay them what we yeah. think is a, a more than livable wage, but we can also come alongside with right. some benefits. And, you know, we all know 
health insurance alone. You know, if you can contribute to health insurance and even go so far as to cover yeah. family's health insurance, man, that's that's a, a, an attractive carrot. So, but we try to use it as more of a um, more on the back end of the conversation to kind of affirm this call. So you wouldn't you wouldn't put out a job posting and list only the we have done range. that only when it's required by the hosting agency. So, you know, if they if they say, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because it is common to see, like in the normal not right. church world, it is very yeah. common these days to yep. see a, yep. a range or something like that. I feel like that's happening more and more. And like, go back 10, 20 years, you yep. would see yep. that less. But nowadays, yeah. it's happening more. So, you know, I was just and, and I'm, curious. I've seen that, a lot of jobs uh, uh, offers in the secular market, too, that will say, um, you know, salary will be commensurate with experience. So it's just an open-ended thing that right. doesn't really answer a question. So, um, yeah, I, th I think it right. goes both ways. But we don't—we certainly don't hide it. And I think yeah. one of the one of the nice things about that is I, I think we, you know we we pay well enough and we benefit well enough that I know if a guy feels called here, he's not going to look at our number and say twenty-two thousand a year. I can't raise a family on that, you know. So, so I'm. <laughs> yeah. So I'm confident <laughs> enough on our end that, that we're going to take care of you. So, yeah. um, and I, and I, you know. Right. I don't know that it'd be a deal breaker, but if a guy, if one of the first questions he asked in an interview is, hey, what's this job pay? You know, I think that would just kind of bring up a red flag. That would cause me to kind of chase a line of questioning like, um, you know, what is your number? What, you know, what, what's the determining factor here? But uh, I, I really haven't run into that in my experience, which is which is good. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. that's so good. Well, Chuck, yeah, we, we can could. talk all day because this thing, I don't want to <laughs> hold you, but I got a couple kind of okay. rapid fire all questions right. to close with. Um, my first one, who's a church leader that you like, you really look up to respect, like yeah. someone that you, I don't know, it could be someone new, it could be someone just over the years sure. you've always yeah. admired. Uh, um, yeah, I've, I've, yeah I've obviously got a couple of uh, pastors that mentored me along, along the way growing up. And so, you know, I've got a couple of those you yeah. know, close friends that even now I could call and and ask advice for, and, you know, there's a tough time. So, right. um, kind of on maybe a, an international or national scale, um, obviously being from San Diego, I've always been a big fan of David Jeremiah over at shadow mountain, had the privilege yeah. of meeting him, yep. and talking to him on the phone a couple of times. And, um, one book I was contemplating writing, I, he actually scheduled a time for me to call him and he gave me some advice and, and wisdom on that. Um, but I've always liked, um, I go back to that balance. He he has this obviously massive structure in this a big church environment that has a wide reaching impact yeah. in your radio and television ministry. And yet he's still the local pastor, the pastor of a local church, stays faithful to preaching and teaching God's word. And um, and I think he does a good job of that balance of, of pastoring a church and yet leading this really massive organization that has lots of different facets and, right. and kind of doing it by keeping himself clean, you know, scandal free, being faithful to God, faithful to preaching the word. And God has just blessed him. And so I, I've always, part of it was the local connection, but I've always admired the way that he, he led that church and that structure. So, yeah. Yeah. That guy's a legend, yeah. man. He just keeps going. I pop him on the TV going. now. Um, you know, well, like how, David Jeremiah. I'll, I'll watch the last 20 minutes of his sermon and you'll know, catch it. So that's good stuff. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, what, what's a book that you think everyone should read? Uh, from, from my perspective as an executive pastor, um, and I've had people ask me before, yep. um, do you ever want to pastor a church? And I, my, my honest answer to that is I just never have really felt, again, that clarity of vision. I don't really think God has called me to be a pastor of a church. So I, I asked myself two questions. Can I pastor that church? Yeah, I, I probably could. Does God want me pastoring that church? No. So for me, that, that just kind of brings me to one of the books um, I, uh, that I've kind of relied on. I think there's a new version of it now, but it's Leading from the Second Chair. Mike Bonham uh, wrote that. And it really, and there's a lot of books you can find on that topic. But I think this is one of my favorites because it talks about how you can lead, um, how you can be fulfilled in that role as a second chair person without having that. And yeah. that, maybe is that that's the humility thing that I talked about before. You can lead, you are in leadership and you've got a lot of uh, decisions to make, but you're also not the top guy as an executive pastor, an associate right. pastor, a church staff member. And so from, from, from guys in yeah. my perspective, uh, that, I think that's a, that's a great resource. Um, and um, yeah, there's another one that great. kind of my educational studies, uh, this topic of emotional intelligence is kind of a growing thing. And Daniel yeah. Goleman wrote a book called Primal Leadership that, um, you know, some some of my students I when I was one. teaching, uh, you know, they would write papers on it because it would be so revolutionary. But kind of understanding that emotional intelligence aspect of how we lead and why we lead. So those are two things that have kind of been favorites for me over the years. Yeah. 
Love that. All right. Third one podcast that you're listening uh, to right now. This, this is going to sound crazy. I'm an, I'm an, no, crazy is good. It's okay. They don't I, all have to be spiritual. Caroline it can be anything. Ask me this all the time. I, I don't listen to podcasts. I know. I know. Yes. Oh, none. I'm, I'm, I'm an old dog, I guess, but I, I have, I, you know, I've, I've, <laughs> I've listened to kind of a like a murder mystery one, a catching episode, and uh, Caroline and Tim just last weekend were telling me about this other comedy one, and I, I just, I, I, it's funny. I guess where you listen to podcasts is going to be in the car or at the gym. I, I really don't go to the gym, yeah. And so in the car, I'm just usually listening to sports radio or something on you know on Bluetooth on my phone. So uh, I did catch that you're you you are you do the games out there oh, right yeah. aren't you uh yeah, yeah I'm, like, the, I'm the public address announcer for tennessee baseball uh which yeah. was you know ranked number one in the country most of last year but uh, we didn't make the college Let's world go. series but yeah it's uh it's the in in stadium announcer that uh, um tells who's yeah. coming up next and give the reads between innings so, so i'm i'm not on the radio or tv but i'm i'm in the stadium so yeah that's a yeah, that's a yeah, nice yeah, little yeah. hobby to have you know that's uh Gets me a, it gets me a free That's seat, cool. a free hot dog. You know, I, I got the best seat in the house. I just have to work for three hours while I'm there. But yeah, yeah, it's yeah, pretty cool though. Um, all right, where can folks go to kind of find you know out more about you, your yeah. church? Um, you know, well, our church, check out our church is called Chilhowee Hills uh, Baptist Church in Knoxville, Tennessee, and that's just kind of the search for everything. Um, our website is chillhowiehills.org. We're on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Chillhowie Hills. There's no code or you know ch one two three. It's just if all. you search Chillhowie Hills Baptist Church in Knoxville, you'll find us in any of those uh, any of those formats. So um, that's where we are on the internet and in person. And we do have a YouTube channel. Our, our services are all broadcast on. Guess what? Chillhowie Hills. So if you search that on YouTube, yeah, so, you, you'll find you it go. everywhere. So yeah, well make done. it pretty simple. Well so, done getting yeah. them all. Yeah, we got all of them. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, well, Chuck, thanks for today, yeah, man. I appreciate your time. Uh, anytime we can chat about this kind of stuff, I'd, I'd be happy to. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, guys, thanks for listening today. Thanks for watching. If you're on YouTube, we'll catch you next week with another episode yeah. of Modern thanks, Church Friend. Leader. Bye bye.